While performing orifice calculations, one of the most important terms is beta ratios. You would have heard about this term and especially you would have heard that you need to keep it between a certain value like 0.3 to 0.7. Why do we have this thing? I tried to ask a few colleagues. When I asked a few colleagues that you know from where did you get this value and why do you maintain this beta ratio, they would tell me that they heard it from a friend that you need to keep between 0.3 to 0.7 or certain people said that you know they read some blogs or online materials where it said certain people said that it was because of some vendor presentation that they had heard you should maintain such a uh, difference between the values like it should be between 0.3 to 0.7 or 0.4 to 0.6 but I had the question that is it really important does it even make a difference to us, let us look into that. First, let's understand beta ratio. So basically here's the orifice, a restriction put inside flow. So our beta ratio is basically the orifice bore upon your pipe ID. So this is your orifice bore and this is your pipe ID. So the ratio between the two leads us to get to beta ratio. Now let's get to the interesting part of it. Let's try to exploit and try to find out what if we don't follow this, what happens? So let's keep beta ratio as one. If we give beta ratio as one, as per the formula, the orifice bore has to be equal to pi pi d. So then they would cancel each other. The answer would be one. So if we keep this as same, what is going to happen is you would have absolutely no restriction to the flow. So there would be no DP. So we can surely not keep a beta ratio of one. That's absolutely out of context. Now let us look into the next case. What if we keep a beta ratio of 0.9? Ah, that's interesting. What would happen in such a case? Let's do this case. So imagine that we take an orifice and we put the beta ratio of 0.9. So when you measure the DP across it, because the beta ratio is 0.9, the restriction is very low. So because of that, the flow would have very less restriction and the DP that we'll get would be very low. And so the accuracy will greatly drop and also the uncertainty would greatly increase. This is an amazing concept explained by API standard. API MPMS is one of the most important standard when it gets to orifice that I have found it. It has the concepts explained in a very simple fashion. Now let's look at a graph which is given by the standard. So here the X axis has beta ratio and the Y axis has uncertainty. Here we'll see that our range is between 0.3 to 0.6. So this is our range. And if you notice for this range, the uncertainty coefficient is very low. So for this range, you see it is the least in the graph. However, if we go for extreme cases like 0.8 for example, you would notice that the beta ratio increases in terms of the uncertainty. So here's a higher number for uncertainty. What if we go for very low beta ratios like 0.1? Again, you would notice that the uncertainty here is pretty higher as compared to between the 0.3 to 0.6 range. So if you would notice that for such beta ratios, the uncertainty percentage goes up till 60% or more. So this is quite dangerous. Hence, we don't prefer to go for such beta ratios in order to prevent the uncertainty. If you're liking these videos, then please subscribe. I would love to hear from you and especially press the bell icon so every Saturday you can receive a new educational video. And we'll now look into the next case. The next case deals with what if we keep a high restriction? A lot of people have this misconception that higher restriction would help us. So imagine that here there's a transmitter put and the beta ratio is 0.2 and now they imagine that the pressure drop is high. So we'll have a better reading. But is it really true? Let's look into this case. So for this case, let's imagine this is your pump and the pump is having an orifice connected. Now what would happen to the system is because it's having very high restriction, the flow that is going through the pump will have to go through that restriction and a lot of pressure will get dropped. So you will have to create or select a pump which is of very high power, high capacity. Is this really good or having a pump with such high capacity and then ourselves creating a restriction in the line? I don't think that this system would be recommended by anyone. So this seems to be a system with very less efficiency. And also there's another thing that the process department when they gave us the IPDS or instrument process data sheet, they tell us that you know what is the recommended or allowable pressure drop. So in the orifice, how much pressure drop are we allowed to give as per their hydraulic calculation? So we also have to maintain that limit. If we keep very high beta ratios, we will not be able to maintain their limit.
also you would have the question that you know is this really the range which is used everywhere is it 0.3 to 0.7 can i never go to 0.2 or 0.5 or how's the case or is it between 0.4 to 0.6 which certain people say so is the beta ratio limit you know mentioned in some thumb rule or is there some fact to it that you know this is the only standard range throughout the world the answer to it is no this is basically found through experimentation also called as empirical way of finding so even the graph or a lot of orifice data is basically empirical in nature that is we have derived through experimentation so this is considered to be a quite conservative and good limit but it depends for certain projects you might have it between 0.4 to 0.6 and according to me 0.5 seems to be the best but it depends on the other parameters like pressure drop and how much inches of h2o you would want as output but this can be considered as the basic thumb rule for keeping the range of beta ratio next is that if you are interested to you know go in depth and learn more about it there's the api standard which is api mpms 14.3 it is an amazing standard for flow meters and the next amazing standard is the iso standard iso 5167 so it is basically divided into iso 617 seven part one two three four it is also co consisting of you know various other dp flow meters like venturis etc so these are two amazing standards which you can go ahead and learn in depth about orifices or any other dp flow meter in general also there's a free gift for you but before that I would like to ask you to subscribe if you found it useful if you're finding these videos valuable and especially press the bell icon and if there is any comments please let me know in the comment section I would try my best to answer it okay so the free gift is a free ebook on engineering standards it's called as PIP instrumentation standards these are simple short and especially good for somebody who wants to start learning standards the standards are essentially important Almost 1,500 engineers have found it valuable from companies like Shell, Technip, DuPont, Dow, etc. The link is given in the description below. If you have any doubts, if you have any concerns, you can tell in the comment section. You can tell it via my blog or LinkedIn, etc. As and when you're comfortable. I would be happy to, you know, have a technical discussion with you. And as always, stay curious, keep learning and have a great day ahead. Thank you.